During the Cold War, the Soviets built weapons that didn't just serve a role. They reshaped the battlefield. One of the most overlooked wasn't a missile or a tank gun, but a turret, a compact steel dome mounting the 14.5 mm KPVT. On armored cars and patrol boats, it turned a heavy machine gun into a roaming cannon. And if you enjoy deep dives like this, make sure to subscribe, because today I'm going inside the KPVT. To understand why the KPVT turret mattered, you first need the weapon inside it, the KPV 14.5 mm heavy machine gun. Developed after World War II, the KPV was never meant for infantry use. It fired massive 14.5 by 114 mm rounds, projectiles with more kinetic energy than many early tank guns. Originally built for anti-aircraft roles, it could shred low-flying aircraft, punch through trucks and APCS, and smash fortifications with brute force. But the KPV's weakness was mobility. Mounted on a heavy ZPU frame, it required a crew, set up time, and left operators exposed. The Soviets needed that same destructive power in a protected mobile platform that could fight alongside armored units. The answer wasn't a new gun, it was a new home. That home was the KPVT, the turret mounted evolution of the KPV. The KPVT was not simply a KPV dropped into a steel box. Almost every part of the gun was strengthened or modified for turret use. The receiver had to withstand constant vibration, uneven terrain, and the stress of long bursts fired from a vehicle platform. To handle this, the KPVT's internal components were reinforced to provide rigidity during sustained firing. The feeding system was redesigned for left-hand feed to accommodate long belts stored within the vehicle allowing continuous fire without manual repositioning. Inside the turret, the operator no longer squeezed a traditional trigger. Instead, the gun fired electrically. A solenoid mechanism connected to the turret's controls allowed the gunner to fire from behind armor while staying seated and stabilized. This change also made the weapon compatible with sighting systems because the gunner no longer had to lean out or adjust his body position to fire. Cooling was another critical upgrade. A turret, by definition, traps heat. The KPVT received a heavier barrel and better airflow channels, allowing the gun to survive longer bursts. While the infantry version had to worry about barrel overheating quickly, the turreted KPVT could deliver sustained fire, especially on vehicles that carried multiple ammunition boxes. The sighting system also changed dramatically. While the ground-mounted KPV relied on iron sights or simple anti-aircraft optics, the KPVT connected to periscopes, night vision devices, and ballistic reticles built into the turret. This allowed accurate fire from inside an armored cabin, especially when engaging distant or moving targets. Taken together, these modifications turned the weapon from a manually operated heavy machine gun into a stabilized, electrically controlled, turret-mounted fire platform. It wasn't merely carried by a vehicle, it became part of the vehicle. Mounting a weapon inside a turret does more than protect the operator. It transforms the weapon's tactical identity. In the case of the KPVT, the change was profound. The first transformation was mobility. The KPV's original anti-aircraft mounts were heavy, stationary, and vulnerable. The turreted KPVT bolted to reconnaissance vehicles like the BRDM-2 or armored personnel carriers like the BTR-60 and BTR-70 could now fire while the vehicle was moving at high speed. This ability erased the KPV's biggest limitation and allowed Soviet forces to deploy 14.5 mm firepower rapidly across the battlefield. Protection was the second transformation. The KPVT turret enclosed the gunner inside armor up to 14 millimeters thick, sloped and curved to increase its defensive value. Instead of crouching behind an exposed frame, the gunner now operated the weapon while fully shielded from small arms fire, fragmentation, and shrapnel. The third change was rotational freedom. The turret's 360-degree traverse meant the KPVT could engage threats instantly from any direction without repositioning. 
On the ground version, a KPV crew would have to manhandle a large mount to track a target. Inside a KPVT turret, the gunner simply turned a wheel, or in later versions, used powered traverse to follow aircraft, vehicles, or infantry with smooth, circular motion. The fourth change came from ammunition capacity. Ground crews often had to carry belts manually, limiting sustained fire. Vehicles could store hundreds or more than a thousand rounds in protective bins. This allowed the KPVT to deliver long engagements, especially during convoy defense or border patrol operations. Finally, later vehicles introduced rudimentary stabilization, allowing the KPVT to fire more accurately on the move. Even without modern stabilization, the mass of the vehicle and its suspension system absorbed enough recoil to make the KPVT surprisingly controllable. These changes did not merely make the weapon safer or more convenient. They elevated it to an entirely new category of battlefield firepower. Calling the KPVT a machine gun undersells its destructive ability. With its turret integration, it functioned much closer to an autocannon. The heart of its power lay in the 14.5 mm cartridge. Anti-armor ammunition, such as the B-32 round, could penetrate 32 to 40 millimeters of rolled steel at around 500 meters. That level of penetration is enough to destroy many armored personnel carriers, rip apart technical vehicles, and punch through engine blocks with ease. Tungsten core rounds extended this capability even further, making the KPVT a serious threat to anything short of a main battle tank. The weapon's rate of fire, about 600 rounds per minute, was moderate for a machine gun, but enormous for a gun firing such large rounds. Each burst landed with the force of repeated cannon strikes, producing a sound and visual impact that soldiers consistently described as intimidating and psychologically overwhelming. The KPVT's range added to its versatility. It could engage ground targets effectively out to two kilometers and target low-flying aircraft and helicopters at long distances. This combination of range, speed, and penetration allowed the KPVT to fill the role of a poor man's autocannon. What made the KPVT even more influential was its deployment across a massive variety of platforms. It wasn't limited to armored personnel carriers. It appeared on border patrol vehicles, fast attack boats, fixed bunkers, coast guard towers, armored trains, naval interceptors, and even experimental helicopter mounts. In Arctic regions, it was mounted on armored snow vehicles used for border defense. With every deployment, the KPVT proved the same point. The combination of a turret and a 14.5 millimeter gun created a devastatingly flexible weapon system that could handle anything from infantry suppression to destroying hardened defensive positions. Its psychological impact was equally important. Soldiers in Afghanistan, Chechnya, and African conflicts all described the KPVT as a weapon that demanded respect. Its ability to chew through cover that normally protected infantry forced opponents to stay low, retreat, or abandon positions entirely. In every important sense, penetration, explosive power, range, and tactical effect, the KPVT behaved like a cannon. To understand the weapon fully, you need to step inside the turret itself. The environment is cramped, mechanical, and brutally loud. The gunner sits behind a periscopic sight with only a narrow field of view, but enough to track targets accurately. The controls include handles or wheels to traverse and elevate the gun, depending on the model of the vehicle. In more modernized versions, powered mechanisms allow smoother tracking. Firing the weapon is done through an electric trigger. The gunner presses a switch, sending current to a solenoid that initiates the firing sequence. This system eliminates the need for direct mechanical linkage and makes firing responsive and reliable even on rough terrain. When the weapon fires, recoil travels through the turret cradle and into the hole. The entire vehicle absorbs the shock, helping stabilize the weapon and allowing successive rounds to remain accurate. The internal cycling of the weapon feeds fresh rounds from long belts stored in armored compartments. Empty casings drop downward into collectors or onto the turret floor. Heat builds quickly. 
the gunner must manage burst length to prevent overheating, though the KPVT's heavier barrel and airflow channels give it better endurance than the infantry model. The elevation typically ranges from slightly negative angles for firing downhill to steep upward angles for engaging aircraft or targets on elevated terrain. Ammunition storage varies by vehicle, but most platforms carry several hundred rounds ready for immediate use. During intense firefights, crews can feed new belts into the turret without exposing themselves to enemy fire. Inside the KPVT turret, everything is engineered for one purpose – delivering overwhelming firepower from a protected, stable platform. While many Cold War weapons became obsolete with the introduction of guided systems and advanced electronics, the KPVT endured. Its longevity comes from simplicity and reliability. It does not rely on complex electronics that can fail in harsh weather. It operates in desert heat, Arctic cold, tropical humidity, and mountainous terrain with equal dependability. Cost also played a major role. While larger autocannons require significant maintenance and expensive ammunition, the KPVT offers nearly the same destructive capability at a fraction of the cost. Nations with limited defense budgets found the KPVT to be the perfect middle ground between a machine gun and a full autocannon. The widespread availability of 14.5mm ammunition ensured the weapon's continued use. Dozens of countries still produce the cartridge meaning the gun remains viable wherever Soviet-era vehicles remain in service. Perhaps the biggest reason for the KPVT's longevity is that it fulfills a role modern militaries still need – a weapon powerful enough to stop vehicles, penetrate fortifications, and threaten aircraft yet compact enough to mount on light vehicles and boats. In conflict zones today, BRDM-2s, BTR-60s, and patrol boats armed with KPVT turrets remain active. As long as these vehicles operate, the KPVT will continue firing. The KPVT didn't rely on modern technology or sophisticated systems. It relied on raw power, smart engineering, and a turret that transformed a heavy machine gun into a mobile cannon feared across decades of conflict. If you want more deep dives into the hidden weapons and overlooked machines that shape modern warfare, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. If you enjoyed this breakdown, let me know in the comments which Cold War system you want decoded next. Your suggestions shape the channel, so keep them coming.